I'm Jonathan. And I'm Lainey, and this is what we taught in Phoenix in our February workshops. Yes. The first class was on the Shim Sham, and we talked about how to open up your creativity. We called this Not Your Mama Shim Sham. And we showed you everyone a couple different examples of how you can change the levels of where you're dancing or add your hands or change up the rhythms, emphasize different parts of your body to make a basic line dance into something that was uh, more creative or something that's more about your own style. Uh, a shim sham in your own voice, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to just demonstrate. Uh, we'll go through the chorus and we'll throw in a bunch of different things that we do here. And uh, you can use these as examples or take them and... Make them your own. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. we went through and discussed connection and various things, some exercises to explore um, some stretch and some compression and to better develop our ability to communicate between ourselves. Yeah, so we talked about the three main points for followers. Uh, we said that we needed to be slower and to really sink into that beat there. And mm -hmm. we wanted to have the followers not assume which step came next. And in addition to that, we really talked about our posture and how important it was for us to keep our shoulders over our ball of our foot so that we were on balance when something was changing. Mm -hmm. And similarly for the leads, we discussed posture and how proper posture enables us to have more agility and to move. And that agility can then be translated into um, hearing better what our partners might be saying to us and being open uh, to that her ask for uh, some space in which to speak with her own voice. So we first we did a, a series of different drills and we built up to that. We'll just briefly show you what they were. We had a side-by-side, -side, eight count, rock, step, triple step, one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven. We had continuous triple steps, which the leaders led. And when the leaders wanted to, they would make that rock step. Talk about really leading that rock step. Pressing into the floor and out and away from it. We did a boomerang step, which brought the followers in front of the leaders. And here, creating a little bit of a stretch as we hear. And then finally, we opened that up to creating some stretch here. A send out with stretch on the front end and stretch on that back end. Then uh, we use those exercises in practice. The second part of our second class was we talked about using closed versus open connection. Closed connection was when our leaders were very clear about the number of counts each step has, such as six counts or eight counts. And we talked about an open connection being where the leaders suggest that there's space for the followers to take a number of counts they want to complete that move. In addition, we talked about the followers asking for an open connection so that they can have the liberties of playing with those footwork you know, yes. things that they want to. So the tool, <laughs> one of the tools that we used to, to explore this, uh, the open versus closed, was just a simple send out. And in, a, in the closed case, the lead using the direct intent can communicate one to, I want this to be a six count movement. So from there we went into um, the leads having a more open uh, perception and enabling the followers to then do her thing, maybe, and closing it up there. So and through mutual agreement, 
we determine this is the end of this movement, we're moving on to the next. And then when the followers decide that they want that space, they're about relaxing and being clear with your intent. Yes. Our third class was our style class in which we explored uh, different methods uh, in which to bring your own personal voice into your dancing. So we had complimentary styling for leaders and followers to start with, and we'll just demonstrate that briefly for you. We have one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I will show the followers footwork from the back as if I was doing that in place. That was be a one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Right. And we have the follow the uh, leaders. And for the leads, we have that layout there. With that layout, we are hitting that as a here, one, two, right? But it's not a static movement. One, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, eight. Stretching back here, continuing our pulse so that we have that sense of the tempo and stretch away from our partner, coming back in on three and four. The next thing we did was we did a variation with sweeps, and we'll just demonstrate that. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, and two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, and two, three, and four. Five, six, sweep, step, kick, ball, king, triple step. Yeah. Yes. Then right. after that part of our class, we used three different jazz steps, each individually, to play around with making your own creativity and your own footwork and looking for places where you could put all of these different exercises into place. So we used a kickball change, we used the crazy legs, and we did apple jacks, and we said, what we want is a clear communication between the leaders and followers, and making sure that the leaders are leading the moves, followers are following, but your footwork can be whatever you wanted, given that you're trying to fit these things in there. Right, in the context of the dance. Yes, exactly. Yes. And that was our third class? Okay. Oh, okay. And in our fourth class, we did, we explored slow drag in our fourth class. Mm -hmm. And so amongst the things that we spent a lot of time on was just the simple idea of walking, proper posture, um, proper knee bending here, moving through our steps. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. we talked about sliding our feet along the floor to achieve those steps and moving through each other as if we're just walking through a door here. And we just practice walking with some pulls and we just said, all right, well, here's the music and practice taking those steps together and moving as a unit. We mentioned that our posture is very important. We're not tucking our hips away and we are not bringing our shoulders over. So. Elongating our spines, staying upright. Yes. Then we did a sequence, mm -hmm. and the sequence went something like this. Sweet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 And a one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we use that sequence to show where there was space for the followers to influence the dance. Mm -hmm. And opportunities for the lead to surrender a little bit of control, allowing the follower to speak with her voice. All right, our last class of the day was Instructor's Choice. And as many of you know, uh, Lainey and I are co-stars on the television program Uncommon Rhythm. And so we decided to bring in a few uh, interesting things that we've picked up on the road as we've been filming the first season. And then from there we went back into our Lindy Hop and brought some, uh, some classic Lindy Hop moves as well as some trendy things. So. so we started with the Viennese Waltz and we went over the box step and the basics of the posture and we had everyone practice and emphasize that it's a fast tempo, but we'll just show you with that going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. So we emphasize that uh, this was a dance that had some elements similar to slow drag and how we connect it. Right, and how we drive through each other as we're moving, depending on who's moving forwards and who's moving backwards. 
Next, we uh, showed some flamenco rhythms. Jonathan will show you his favorite yeah, one. This is my, my favorite flamenco rhythm, right? We're going to go here, we go to heel, to so, heel, so, and then other side. And then we went from there into Lainey's favorite. I have my flamenco rhythm, which was. Show that to you from the back. Then we had our Lily Hop, we threw back in there and we mix a classic move called the Tango, which is from the California routine, together with what we call a surprise swing out, which is a very trendy move at the moment. And uh, this kind of went like this, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, a three, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, five, six. And that was the end of our Saturday. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to email. Lainey or myself Jonathan.